Hi guys, so today we're going to talk about which method is best to use when solving quadratic equations, right? So now we've learned a large variety of ways to solve quadratic equations, and depending on the problem we're given, some techniques are better, easier, or more efficient to use, right? So the techniques are listed below from easier to harder. Um, in each application, it is essential that the equation we are solving is equal to zero, okay? Um, if it isn't, then some minor manipulation might be needed. We want to move everything to the same side. Right. So the first technique here is square root method. Um, this is when we're just uh, doing inverse operations to it. Okay. Um, so here it talks about how b equals zero or there is no bx term. The strength is it's the easiest, the weakness, it rarely occurs, right? It's something like if it was x squared equals 16. That rarely happens, okay? Um, and then second method is factoring. This is the first one we actually learned, okay? When would we use this? When the equation is factorable. Um, for those of us who are quick at factoring, factoring is one of the best methods, fastest methods we could use, right? Um, it's probably the most reliable, okay, provided that you could factor. Um, the weakness is not every problem is factorable, and in that case, you can't use this method. Okay. Um, next is completing the square. When would you use it? I would probably only use it when A equals 1, and definitely B has to be even. If it's not, if B is odd, when you do that divide by 2 and square, you're going to get that fraction there, which most of us don't really like. Okay. The strength of it, some people would actually say it's probably quicker than the quadratic formula, especially those of us who can do that b divided by 2 square, factor it um, pretty quickly, then completing the square is great. Also great when you get to further math classes when you do that a lot. Um, the weakness, maybe some people find that weird step of moving the constant. Okay, Quadratic formula, last resort, man. Strength always works, and for some reason people always have it memorized. But the weakness is it's easy to make mistakes, especially as you're simplifying it, okay? So here, we're going to determine the most effective method, and we're going to justify why, and we're going to solve it, okay? So here, what we're going to do is we're going to move the x's to one side, or in this case, I want to make it equal to 0. So since this is a minus 5x, I'm going to add 5x. Right. This leaves you with x squared. So the minus plus 5x, it ends up being 0x, so no more x. And then minus 9 equals 0. Okay, so this is my thing. Okay, so which method is best? Okay, some might say factoring. This is a difference of two squares. It's super fast. Okay, or that square root method. Okay, because there is no b and it's just x squared, nice and easy to go. Okay, so let's do it with the square root method. Okay, so I'm going to add 9 to both sides. Okay. x squared equals 9. Get rid of the square by square rooting it. This leaves me at x equals plus or minus square root of 9, which we know is 3. So we have two answers, positive 3 and negative 3. Okay. Um, for those of us who are also pretty quick with factoring, right? what you could have done, x squared minus 9 is x plus 3, x minus 3 equals 0. So each of them equal to 0. Here you get x equals negative 3 and x equals positive 3, which also works. All right, so it depends which one you saw first. Some people might have factored right away with difference of two squares. Some of us might have used square root method. Okay, but both of these are great ways to solve this first one. Okay, so here's the second one. Okay, I'm going to move everything to one side, so I'm going to move this 8x over. Since it's a positive 8x, I'm going to subtract it over. Since this is a minus 2, I'm going to move it over by adding 2. This leaves me with x squared. 5x minus 8x is negative 3x. And then negative 12 plus 2 is negative 10 equals 0. Okay.
Um, 8x minus 8x is 0, negative 2 plus 2 is 0. Okay. And then we're going to factor. So for those of us who are quick with factoring, especially with the guess and check method, quick way to factor, this is x minus 5, x plus 2. How was I able to do it so quickly? I knew x times x would give me that x squared. Negative 5 and 2 will give me the negative 10. Then the negative 3 comes from the negative 5x plus 2x, right? So for those of us who are quick with factoring, factoring here was a great method. Okay. Then all I have to do using the zero product rule is that if I'm multiplying two things and it equals zero, one of those factors has to be zero. So either x minus 5 equals zero or x plus 2 equals zero, which means x equals 5 and x equals negative 2. Right. Factoring one of the most important skills, so the faster and more accurate you're able to do it, the better you'll be in your future math classes. Right. Next one here, right. I'm going to move everything to the same side, so subtract x, add 3. x squared plus 6x plus 1 equals 0. So I already know this can't be factored because nothing multiplies to 1 but adds up to 6 because 1 times 1 is 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. So it doesn't give me that 6. Okay, so not factorable. However, I see that this B is even and A is 1. What I'm going to do is I'm going to complete that square. So what I'm going to do, move the x terms by itself, so subtract 1, then I'm going to take b, divide it by 2, and square it, and some of us now can even do it in our heads, alright, so that even saves us more time, so that's a 9 here, I'm going to add 9 here, and add 9 here, then factor this is x plus 3 squared. This is 8. Then what I'm going to do is square root both sides. This becomes x plus 3. This is plus or minus square root of 8. Okay, I know that square root of 8 has a perfect square in it. It's 4 times 2. That perfect square is 4, which means this is 2 square root of 2. Square root of 4 becomes that 2 on the outside. Oop, let me move it up. And then, now all I have to do is move this minus 3 over. And so I have x equals negative 3 plus or minus 3. 2 square root of 2. Right? And with the more practice, certain methods are going to be faster and faster for us, which makes it a lot easier as well. Okay, then we're going to do the last one here. Okay, so here I'm going to move this 3 over by subtracting 3. So 2x squared minus 4x minus 3 equals 0. Okay. Um, if you want, you could totally complete the square with this. Some might think it's a little faster. Okay, Some people might use quadratic formula, so really up to you. Um, just remember, if you complete the square, you need to factor out that a first, right? or quadratic formula. So I'm going to do the quadratic formula here. Um, and then I'm also going to do it with completing the square and then up to you which one you think is faster. Okay, so here a equals 2, b equals negative 4, c equals negative 3. Okay, so let's plug it in. So x equals negative b, so negative negative 4 plus or minus square root b square negative 4 square minus 4 times a which is 2 times c which is negative 3 all over 2 times a. Okay. Negative negative 4 is 4. Negative 4 squared is 16. 
Negative 4 times 2 is negative 8. Negative 8 times negative 3 is a positive 24. And then 2 times 2 is 4. Okay. Keep simplifying it. 4 plus or minus 16 plus 24 is 40. Square root of 4. Okay. So perfect square in 40 is 4. So that will be square root of there'll be 2 square root of 10 over 4. Okay. 4 over 4 would be 1, plus or minus. Then 2 over 4 is 1 half, so 1 half square root of 10. Okay. Those are your two answers. Okay. So if you prefer the completing the square, that is fine. So let me do it again, but this time with completing the square. Okay. So if I'm going to complete the square, I'm not even going to move that 3. So I need my a to be 1, so I'm going to factor out that 2 first. Then I'm going to identify b, which in this case is negative 2, divided by 2 and square it. Negative 2 divided by 2 is negative 1, and negative 1 squared is 1. I'm going to take that 1, I'm going to add it in here. And what I've really added is a 2, since this is 2x squared minus 2x plus 2, so on the other side I'm going to add a 2. Okay, so this becomes 2x squared minus 2x plus 1 equals 5. Then I'm going to factor this minus 1 squared equals 5. Then I'm going to divide by 2. This gives me x minus 1 squared equals 5 halves. Okay. Then to get rid of the square, I'm going to square root both sides. This leaves me with x minus 1 equals plus or minus square root of 5 over 2. Um, in geometry you'll, and in algebra 2, you'll learn that you can't have a square root on the bottom. And so what ends up happening is we multiply both the top and the bottom by that square root. Okay. And what it does, 5 times 2 is 10, so square root of 10. And then this square root of 2 times square root of 2 becomes a 4, square root of 4, which ends up being 2 here, and then add 1 on both sides. Right. So here, x equals 1 plus or minus square root of 10 over 2, which is what we also have here. x equals 1 plus or minus square root of 10 all over 2. So up to you which one you thought was easier. Okay, so this gave you a brief overview of which method is best. This table will help you a lot in determining it. And then as you practice, you'll start realizing which methods are faster and easier. Okay, that's it for today. Have a great rest of the day. Bye, guys.